Hey guys, how's it going? ProDark Gaming here. It's been a long fucking time. Sorry guys, I've been just so busy with work and everything going on, and I'm trying to, you know, game at the same time, but it just, it, it gets a little crazy, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but lately I've been playing a lot of Back for Blood, and I'm playing it on the PS4. I do have it on PC, but I prefer console gaming, to be honest. Um, so this is going to end up being a console settings kind of tip that I've noticed and tips and tricks in the game and just kind of to help anybody in general get better, but also to help those that are on console wanting better settings for them and their gameplay because the aiming is so fucking weird on analog stick, I'm not going to lie. So uh, we'll go into options real quick and you guys can check her out. Um, all this, all the gameplay settings, I basically left the same. The reticle, color, white, you don't need to change any of this really, except for motion blur. I would turn that off. Uh, camera and motion strength obviously doesn't matter because the motion blur is off. Um, waypoint opacity, I would not turn that down too much so you can really know where you're heading. Um, the rest of the stuff you don't need to worry or touch on. Uh, wireless controller settings. Um, the inputs and stuff I've left the same. The horizontal sensitivity, this is all preference. I would not crank vertical up past 38. Um, honestly, I tune this on a daily. I'm always touching this. I can't, it, like I said, with an analog stick, you can't get this to where you are happy with it. So just play around with it, get it where you guys need to be. Um, left stick dead zone, I would not put higher than like. 0.5 but basically wherever you need to take it so you don't have stick drift you don't want that as you're trying to play in ADS I turn vibration off I hate it so you guys might want to um, everything else can stay the same uh, aim assist strength there's some people that end up turning this off and some people that end up leaving it on um, so I leave it on there's, I know a lot of people that have put theirs up to 100 and then they turn target snapping off. I found out keeping it between 40 and 70 with target snapping on, you snap to the target, but you still have control. It's not really holding you. You can hit those weak spots kind of nicely. So between 40 and 70-ish is a good aim assist strength. Uh, the target snapping, uh, I just like it to ADS and snap right to the target. That's up to you guys to leave it on or not. If you would turn it off, I'd probably run about an 80 strength for aim assist. Um, I've just started tweaking these. I was running a 4 and a 3, but I put them down, and I notice I can kind of keep my shots more where I want them to hit for the weak spots and the precision spots. Uh, other than that, motion blurs off for graphics, field of view... I would crank this the whole way up. I had it down some to just, I have a regular PS4, so I didn't want to strain it, but I don't think it'll strain it by turning it all the way up. That's how, ends up being how you guys end up wanting it. Um, I like my monitor to be a little brighter than usual, but it also depends on the settings you guys run or what mode you have your monitor on. So I have an MSI optics curved monitor. I it's on whatever default it's it set at, so that ends up being however you guys want to do it. Um, there's nothing really with audio. Uh, the music is kind of up to you. Doesn't I don't care for music. Um, the dialogue is how much you can hear them talk. I normally leave that up, but due to video purposes, I have it down. Uh, sound effects, that's actually, i probably turn that up a little more. Um, master volume, it's it's kind of a loud game, so I have it down a little bit. Uh, the voice volume, the I would honestly keep your mic volume at like 70 or below 70, 50, and I would turn voice volume down. The, the in-game chat is just <laughs> fucking god-awful. Uh, other than that, that is the settings tip for you guys on console it should be the same for xbox so on and so forth i would think but for ps4 it 
works great for me. So in between there is how I'd end up working your guys' aim settings and stuff like that. Uh, other than that, um, to get you guys more of a feel for the menus and everything, you're, when you start off, you're going to see that you're going to have three deck selections. Solo decks, you have access to all the cards, as you see, 16 pages. Um, then if you look at your campaign decks, you'll start off with a starter deck. Uh, these should be the five cards I never... I made a new deck as soon as I went through the playthrough. Uh, after that, you start getting more. Right now, I have seven. I have... I'm two missions away from Act 4. Uh, so, yeah. Um, something I noticed that nobody really pays attention to attention to or they don't care uh, I'm not sure but I like doing this you can go over to your deck here click on it and you can edit the name so that way when you're looking at it and you're trying to select your deck you don't end up messing up because you'll see custom deck one custom deck two custom deck three like yes it has a number but it's it it gets a little confusing this just makes it more simplex for you so that is something I found out. Um, and starting out wise, uh, the best cards you're going to have available to you is Combat Knife, Battle Lust, and Copper Scavenger. I would have those probably at the top. You're going to get Copper Scavenger pretty quick. Um, second Chance isn't bad. Wounded Animal really isn't terrible either, but uh, midway through Act 1... About midway through Act 2, you don't need it. it. Most of these cards shouldn't be in your deck. Combat Knife, however, is still a pretty useful card kind of all around, but if you're doing Veteran or Nightmare, probably half of these cards shouldn't be in your deck that are sitting right here. Um, uh, Swarm has six pages of cards. And you, you, from what I know, you can't unlock anymore. You're not going to... This is what you get. Um... They give you all these, which I made a hybrid basically in between everything to add, you know, it's a hybrid deck between all four of these categories. Um, so you guys can make your own or just run one of these depending on what you want to play for. You should probably mix them up a little bit, but yeah, you don't nearly have the same amount of cards that you do in the campaign, but however... Vitamins in the campaign only give you 15. Here it gives you 25. That only gives you 15% trauma resistance. Here it gives you 50. So, as you can tell, it's definitely a little different when it comes to Swarm. Um, the supply lines. This is where it gets a little tricky. Um, you can unlock all the uh, cards throughout this. Um, I know you don't get any duplicates. The there are skins like that that should be that's a head and a shirt, uh, paints, stickers, so on, um, camos for your guns. This is where you unlock all that stuff at. So I just got glass cannon. Um, I don't know exactly how they work to be honest. Um, every time you clear them, another one just comes back. So I'm not sure if, like, you can clear the whole top path and it goes away, or if, like, it just will pull from a different section or however. I just think it'll just keep going and going until you finally get everything. Like, even if you picked top path the whole way, let's say there's other cards that drop for down here. I noticed top path is mainly damage cards. Uh... Yeah, DPS and stuff, reloading, damage. And then clinic is healing stuff or resistances and everything. And then the bottom seems to be kind of a mix of a little bit of everything and move speed. Um, but I feel like once you get all the damage cards, they would just pull from all the other stuff. Or they would delete that whole category and add the other, just make you do the other two to finish it all out. But that is supply lines. That is how you get your skins, stickers, and stuff like that, um, and the cards to build your decks. You get supply points by doing the campaign and doing swarm. The best way to get supply points is doing campaign. Um, then tips for cleaners. Um, so 
even Jello is like a default. He's basically could be any kind of style build, but him and Holly are basically the two main melee people for if you're going to do a melee deck. Um, Mom and Doc are definitely the two healer support people. Um, if you're looking to do a little more damage without being mainly a healer, I would say go Mom. If you're looking to be a main healer, go Doc. Uh, Walker and Jim are the main DPS people. Uh, if you're looking to be more supportive and all around you being the DPS person, I would go... I would say Walker, but I feel like a lot of people would argue Jim. Jim has 25 ADS. He has 2.5 stacking damage until he takes damage, but it's precision kills. Jim would not be a bad combo if you're going to run like a sniper and an SMG with him. But you would probably want to run two is one, one is none. Um, then Hoffman, Hoffman, he's the... Uh, I call him the pack mule. He he just helps with ammo and everything and all. Um, I don't really see anybody play Hoffman or Carly too much. And I don't really think they're needed. Uh, that's my honest opinion. I don't I don't see them useful enough to be needed. Uh, Carly, she can sense nearby mutations and hazards and give us plus 50% team use speed. Well, one card can do that, or even a higher, a better card can give you even more than that, so really she's kind of useless. Um, I don't see a point in her, except she does have the Tech-9, which is a great starting weapon. Um, other than that, yeah, that, those two are probably, I, I find them the most useless. Um... Armory is just where you attach your skins and stuff for your weapons and anything like that that you guys are running or have unlocked. So like for the AK, I got Slap, Life. Um, other than that, when you look at your profile, you have all your personalization stuff, your little emblems and titles and make yourself look a little fancy here. Uh, oh, hey, look at that. Um, and you got your banners. And then your spray and foreground. This is what you just, I think it's once, you only get one, and you can mark it on the ground below you. Uh, any other tips? Anything I can think of? Um... I think for a settings and an understanding of the game, this is probably a good point for me to stop on. I'll probably end up making another video just more of in-game and depth for you guys. And just so you guys can kind of get a more grasp. Because I'm going to tell you, if you're playing with blueberries on this, it, it can be a nightmare. Like, if you're doing recruit blueberries, it's a nightmare. Veteran blueberries, it can be a nightmare. It's it, it's bad, and there's no LFG out to even help you get a team together to actually get some stuff done. Uh, and I'm not saying blueberries are bad, it's just there, there's a lot to this game. It, this game is pretty in-depth, and it, it, there's a learning curve to this game. Uh, you ain't just going to jump in and know everything right off the get-go. Uh, other than that, my last tip is if you guys shoot like this... And then start reloading. You can punch. And look, you're already reloaded. So let's one more show for you. And then just punch. And any horde in your way. This is why the combat knife is so useful. Then you're already reloaded. Right back to shooting. Again. Alrighty. Well, like I was saying, guys, I'm sorry it's been taking so long to get videos together for you. I've just been ridiculously busy. And, uh... I soon end up getting laid off, so I'm going to be hyped up for that and be posting videos and everything more weekly. Um, other than that, Destiny 2 is right around the... Not Destiny. <laughs> Dying Light 2 is right around the corner, and I'm very hyped for it. Um, I'm probably going to do a Let's Play and edit some videos throughout that and end up coming up with tips and tricks that I can find to help you guys out. Other than that, I hopefully you guys, you know enjoyed and if so thank you 
other than that, have a blessed day, guys. Catch you later.